Hey everybody, um, it's Daniel. I am going today to do a brief overview of the Erin uh, electric violin that's available on Amazon and eBay. I got mine off of an eBay store um, for... <sighs> the shipping was free, so I think it was 53 bucks. The only reason why I purchased this item uh, was because it was $53.00. And because I, as a child, did a little bit of violin, um, now that I'm older, um, I have a, an acoustic violin, but I'm also living in a situation where I have five roommates, and we're not in a huge house. So, because I keep a little bit more regular hours, I thought I'd get an electric violin because while it's not plugged in to like an amp, it's pretty quiet. Um, so my thought was is that if I decide that I want to practice because my knowledge that it's a little bit loud with a, an acoustic has kept me from playing, that I finally capitulated and was like, well, I'm going to get a quiet violin so I can practice because this is something I would like to do. I don't particularly want to be a professional <laughs> per se, but I want to play an instrument, one that I enjoy. I grew up on the violin. It's been a very, very long time. Let's, let's, let's just say that. Um, so, you know, I just kind of wanted to get back in the swing of things. So I bought the Erin. Um, I'm going to put a, uh, little describer down there about the particular, uh, web site that I got it from. Uh, I already left a review, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pretend to do an unboxing, but, um, I've already touched everything. All right. So I'm going to show you the Erin. All right. So when I got it in the, I got it from USPS. So it shipped from, uh, California, it said. So, um, that was interesting. So comes with its own case. So the case itself is pretty okay. Um, like it's kind of what you expect from a company that uh, has Chinese products. It's black, uh, so it's not showing up very particularly well. Actually, let me see if I can get. Excuse my stuff. All right. So it's still not showing up very well. Um, so the case itself has this outer pocket, which. It's fairly, you know, it's a fairly good size. Um, it opens up pretty wide, which is nice. Uh, so I can think of holding a couple of things in there, maybe a shoulder rest, maybe some sheet music, if you're very, very good at that kind of folding. But, alright, so here is the violin. It's got a little flap here, which I think is nice. Uh, so, I apparently have already had it open. I got mine in a cherry red, and so this is the inside of the case. I like that it's a gray and not... I've seen ridiculous, like, yellow colors, so gray I'm okay with. It's got the standard two um, bow holder right there. Uh, nothing particular inside of it to keep them apart. There's just a small divider. So the violin has only one pocket and inside of it, it has the adapter to plug into an amp. So the violin itself, uh, the adapter for it is only the same size as a headphone jack. So um, you can basically plug all three plugs with headphones and you're good. It came with two sets of rosin. Um, now both of them are kind of what you'd expect from a Chinese company rosin. They're kind of broken. Yeah. Let's see if that can, if you can see that. There we go. So it's a uh, amber rosin. So it's, you know, it's serviceable. Um, I'm going to keep with my rosin. Um, 
me see if I can pop this one open without setting you guys completely down. All right. And this is a, another rosin, different brand, but um, I've already, it's, I think it's Serafina is what it called. Serafine. Eh. Um, I've already used it a little bit because I wanted to rosin a bow that I already have and see how it felt. Um, rosin's pretty okay. Um, not not the best, but I'm again the entire package was fifty three. It came with a set of headphones, and I think these are some of the cheapest headphones I've ever seen. Like really, if if I'd been ordering it for the headphones, I would have been sadly disappointed. Uh, these are probably just gonna go into the kiddos bag for extra headphones. Um, so not really all that interesting. So here is a cleaning cloth, which is Aaron, uh, instruments, uh, let's see. And it's got the Aaron sticker here. So, um, you know that it's a fine product when it says high quality guitar in a violin case. So... I'm not even sure what that says, like, in the cursive. Uh, R, S. Something in heaven. Um, Bre yeah, I'm not really sure. It says designed in USA, but I don't know how much of that I believe. Um, so the bridge came wrapped in this as far as I can tell it's somebody's homework um there's English on this side the theme of the picture is to fight against violence that sounds like a good one to know the speaker in intend to touch on pollution oh well, he's not gonna the kid's not gonna do the best on uh tense but, you know, I hope that it, maybe that was a little while ago. So, the actual violin is, ta-da, right here. So, um, the violin came with the uh, violin strings off to the uh, not tight, which was nice. The uh, bridge was, again, wrapped in the kid's homework. So, let me pull out the little sucker. Okay, so... First thing that you notice is that the violin is about half as thick in the width as a regular violin, but because it's solid wood construction and it's not going to be resonating anyway, I think that that's a pretty fair, um, that's pretty fair. Let's see, um, it came with all the micro tuners, came with the bridge. Uh, I'm going to talk about the bridge in a minute. It's an uh, interesting tale. Um, the fingerboard is definitely not ivory. Um, if you can see right here, um, I can't really see it in this light. Oh, that's a little bit of it. So the um, black paint kind of ends right here. The rest of it going up is um, just the white wood, which I'm fine with. Um, again, I'm doing this because I need something to practice on that will not wake my roommates. Um, but then the finger or the peg box is it's pretty rough, I will be honest. Like, it's not well finished. It's got a lot of rough edges. The pegs are really, really long out. So I'm probably going to have to do some... Uh, probably gonna have to get those adjusted um it's holding right now but i also used some uh dope on it so it's it, you know it is what it is um the scroll works kind of sloppy like it it looks like a scroll but you can tell that it's uh probably been machined the <laughs> paint is actually kind of metallic so it's got a little bit of sparkle in it which I'm not going to hate on. I knew that that was going to be the 
Um, the pigs themselves are actually pretty okay. Like they're good quality. The uh, they've got a little bit of detailing, but um, they just pr and they are pretty much round. Like the holes themselves, sometimes you hear about them not being round, and these ones are pretty round. So um, it, they just probably need to be a little bit bigger. But yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to come back for some negatives, but I'm going to set that down real quick. Bo is um, pretty cheap. Uh, it's straight, which is nice. So let's see. That is a view of my thumb. Not going to be helpful for you guys. But yeah, so the... Yeah, it's pretty straight, so I'm not going to be too harsh on that. Uh, definitely not wood. It's some kind of plastic. Um, not really sure what. It's been painted to match the violin, so not really sure about that. Um, the hair itself, um, I'm not 100% sure it's hair. It's probably... It said Mongolian uh, hair, but I definitely have my doubts. I think it's probably more of a Japanese synthetic hair because you see those in wigs a lot and the consistency is pretty similar. But um, yeah, um, I wasn't really thrilled with it. Um, it's got a bunch of loose individual hairs in it, um, but you know, that's, that is what it is. Um, one sec, I'm going to shift it around. So yeah, um, not, I mean, it's not great, but I'm not going to hate on it. Um, I've ordered a couple of different bows because, uh, I knew that I was probably not going to be thrilled with the one that came with this, which is fine. I ordered those off of Amazon. I've got, um, I was able to manage to find a set that was two bows that were wood um, with uh, hair that had good reviews for $12. I'll still, I'll see if it's still on the, uh, if it's still on Amazon. So I'll give you guys the uh, link below. Let's see. So uh, just getting back to the actual violin. So a couple things to note is that the fingerboard itself is not curved correctly. So you know how when you have a fingerboard, it's supposed to, on the G string, be at a certain height and then kind of cascade down so you can get that good arch so that you can do uh, fairly okay with your bow? Well, this one basically was just a bridge. So same, same uh, height on both sides. So... Um, I didn't realize that when I pulled it out, so I actually did the, went to the trouble of curving it correctly, only to realize that the bridge itself, or the fingerboard itself, is not curved correctly. So I did some follow-up fiddling with that. Haha, <laughs> get it fiddling, because I'm with talking about a violin. I'm here all week. Try the veal. Um, so I actually ended up solving that problem by using a little bit of, um, let's say it's, uh, hot glue to just lift that side up a little bit because otherwise I was getting almost no clearance on the E string. And, uh, once I had lifted it, I actually figured out that there's actually another slight problem which is the nut itself is super low. Um, not only was it low, it was super long, so it had channels that were directing the strings pretty far out, So, and just not a lot of height. So I actually grabbed my woodworking tools and I shortened the nut and then uh, to lift it up until I can get uh, probably or placement uh, for it. Sorry, I went out of focus. There we go. I actually used um, some zip ties and I lifted it uh, while I was 
tightening it down. So that actually gave it the appropriate height. So now I'm getting um, the correct amount of play between where the uh, string itself is and where the fingerboard is. So <laughs> it's um, it's it was a little bit of work to actually get this set up, but um, and I haven't replaced the strings. I've got a set of dominants that I was going to put on it, but I think that the dominants are going to be too good of strings for this thing. So I'm probably just going to order, um, probably like not great strings, but you know, halfway decent ones, uh, for it. Uh, the tone itself is not too terrible. Um, when I was playing it earlier, so, um, the electronics parts are on this side. So, um, underneath here, I uh, split place for a nine volt battery. Did not come with a nine volt. I had to get this separate. Um, but it was pretty intuitive. Um, it's got a on off switch. So on and off. It's got the phones. It's got, it's got a mic, which I'm not really sure about. And then it's got a line out. So, um, these two I've tested. I don't have a mic. Um, but it also comes with a tone and a volume. So the tone itself makes it like, it's essentially the same as when you have it on an amp. So it's got, uh, the middle tone is kind of not shrill and the, or full. So it's just kind of a regular noise when it's set to full tone it's very reverbery, uh, but it's also less distinct. When it's all the way on narrow, it's a little bit shrill, I will be honest. Okay, and the volume is a volume. So uh, both work, um, more or less. Let's see. So yeah, um, I was worried that because I did that minor repair here, that there was going to be issue with the sound, but the sound didn't change uh, between doing that and not. Um, but yeah, so let's see. All right, so um, on the whole, um, I've been fiddling with this for the afternoon since I got it. I was pretty excited to get it because I really want to start playing a little bit more and you know, kind of catching up, uh, so that I feel a little bit more comfortable with it. As it stands now, I don't want people hearing me particularly much, uh, because, um, it's been a while since I've had to, you know, actually do, uh, any kind of note playing. So I know that my bow is hitting more than one string at a time sometimes. Uh, the fingering's pretty sloppy, and I have completely forgotten how to do vibrato. So I'm going to have to remember or relearn how to do that. Uh, so uh, on the whole, I would say as a cautious endorsement of this product, it's an ear and it looks a little bit like a Cecilio, uh, but I haven't held one, so I don't know how they compare. Um, I will say that if you are literally looking for an instrument just to practice on where nobody can hear you, um, this is probably not a terrible purchase. I will probably be switching it out in a year with, this is, this is the logic that I tell myself, is that I will probably switch it out in a year um, with either just playing my actual acoustic, which I got when I was a kid, I lent it to my little brother when he started doing violin work. He didn't clean it, so there has been, like, this horrible, uh, just, like, caking of resin just underneath where the bow goes. And that might have pissed me off so much that I haven't actually touched the violin in a very, very, very long time, because... I was able actually to clean that, which funnily enough, vinegar, um, just light. And then you just keep rubbing it for a long time. 
Uh, so my thought process is, is that if in a year's time I'm still playing, I have gone up in quality of my own work, then I will treat myself to a better violin. I might stay in the electrics, I might go to an acoustic, I might have a hybrid. The dream is to someday be comfortable enough to do a five-string um, acoustic electric model, but that, I think, is probably going to be a few years down the line. Um, so, things to remember. Uh, the nut on this is really, really low. Uh, you're probably going to have to get uh, a nut bolster. Um, the curve of the fingerboard is like a bridge rather than like a cascade. Um, so that's interesting. While playing, you can't really tell the difference between a correct bend in either instrument, but uh, it's really important when you are doing um, stuff with the bridge. Um, see bridge itself came correct to the fingerboard but it's not correct for how people play so there was some sloppy engineering going on there um shoulder or the chin rest it's fine it's um it's painted wood it's um decent quality like i'm not gonna hate on it uh but yeah uh violin is super light so uh, if you do not have a neck brace, the, um, the, uh, violin's light enough that you can get by with, uh, a couple rubber bands and, like, a rolled up sock, uh, which I, what I, which is what I was doing earlier. I've got a couple of, uh, neck braces or shoulder braces in the mail, uh, but I don't have those right now, so I can't show them to you. Um, and yeah, so not, not a terrible investment, but definitely not a high quality investment. This is something that I did for myself knowing the risks, uh, because if it had gone terribly wrong, I knew that eBay, uh, and PayPal are good enough companies that I would have been able to either get a return or get a, um at least partial discount, but I don't actually think the violin's that terrible. Um, yeah. So, in conclusion, buyer beware, but if you are aware of the risks and the issues, then it's not a terrible stopgap while you're practicing in a roommate situation where you don't want your roommates to hear how terrible you are until you get better. All right. Well, this is Daniel, and I'm signing off.